Welcome to the Artist Talk here at One Hat, One Hand. Um, super happy to have Johanna Potig here with us today. Um, Johanna, it's, it's been amazing to work with you on this great project we've been you know, working on together. I know. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I just wanted to kind of take a moment to dive into your um, you know, art, you know, your time here in San Francisco as an artist, and then maybe some of your early uh, you know, inspirations and how you kind of uh, have moved through your career. Um, so yeah, if we could just kind of dive in, uh, maybe introduce yourself and say hello. Yeah, so yeah. I'm Johanna Potig, and um, I have lived in the Bay Area since um, 1980. And um, originally I grew up in the Philippines and I um, started doing public artworks really in relationship to that community in the South of Market in downtown uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, lived in the Hague, but also worked uh, for many years at the South of Market Cultural Center, which is a great artifact of an institution and a neighborhood art center uh, in the South of Market. And did a lot of um, connecting to the different communities uh, in the Bay Area, but also I've done work in LA and Chicago and across the country and, and yeah, other places, yeah. but rooted here. I even wrote this book, Wall Stories, about it uh, because the experience of working closely with community or just uh, people in a neighborhood or um, institutions, uh, neighborhood, other artists, um, fabricators are all part of creating public pieces. Like sure, there's sure. all these yeah. webs of relationships yeah. that I've been, you know, building or connecting to right. all these Yeah, areas. I mean, you've definitely, um, you've been here in the Bay Area experiencing so many different time periods. I mean, San Francisco has always been such an amazing, you know, what we say, a boom bust city. And so mm -hmm. you've been through so many waves Absolutely. that you've endured with the different movements that have happened here, um, the different, you know, uh, kind of art scenes that have come up and, and you know, and, and um, inspired so many people. Um, yeah, can you maybe just speak a little yeah, bit to some of the different know, groups that you worked with? Well, I've um, worked a lot with the experimental music and performance uh -huh. uh, folks. Um, just um, uh, part of a, a band called Wig Band, very feminist. You know, a lot of uh, worked um, with uh, women's or you know performance or feminist performance, as well as. Um, I've worked with a lot of Filipino American artist mm -hmm. uh, groups, uh, Diwa, where we did some really interesting uh, public pieces and performances around um, that experience, the colonization, and just being uh, in such a diverse community and society. Right, right. Uh, I did the first mural to uh, Harvey Milk uh -huh. on DuBose Park. Um, I did the first mural to Filipino American history and to Southeast Asians. Um, history. I worked with young kids at Filipino Education <laughs> Center. I taught at uh, CSU Monterey Bay for 20 years, working with college age. I worked with youth. Like I remember one project we did uh, with youth when we had the first uh, tech boom, you know, right. and things got all switched up and their <laughs> whole environment, you know, and then that went away and then it came back. So I worked with women in the jails. I worked with uh, mental health uh, community. So. It makes me tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you've exactly. obviously. No. I feel like you know that was you know getting to know you and, mm -hmm. and and working on the project we have, but also then kind of just hearing some of your stories of being in the Bay Area here, San Francisco. We call it the Bay Area now, but mm -hmm. you know for so right. long it was San Francisco. San Francisco, and, yeah. Uh, you know the Oakland scene there. Obviously, uh, for me, when I moved out here from New York in 2004, you know coming to San Francisco and the art scene that was here. Uh, it was such a refreshing environment because it wasn't all about the gallery shows or the, the, the you know the the um, fancy art shows or the, the, the you know all of the, the high dollar uh, art world. It was a it seemed like the Bay Area or San Francisco was the place where you came to make art, to be an artist, to connect with other working artists, and for me that was really refreshing. And I do remember you know in the early days upon my arrival, kind of going to Soma Arts. Um, and just, you know, in fact, also coming to this gallery here, the, the luggage store gallery, 
um, and just you know feeling like there was something so unique about San Francisco's art scene. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment just to kind of you know talk if you could just talk a little bit about Soma Arts and some of your early work there. Yeah, so I actually started working at Soma Arts. You know, it's South Emory Cultural Center, Soma Arts, but Soma Arts. Yeah. Um, through the California Arts Council, uh -huh. I had um, uh, artists in residency. So I, they supported me to um, go out and create projects in the community and be in residence. They also, I also taught a figure drawing class there uh -huh. for all the years up in there. <laughs> the, the and I also uh, had exhibits there like Monumental Woman. I also did uh, two big projects there. Uh, I have this a whole series of uh, performance production collaborations. One was the Glamour Summit in mm -hmm. 2000, and then we did uh, Glamour Get Him in 2015. So I have a long history of working with, in that space, which is an amazing space. Yeah. I mean, it's a classic, and I did the mural on the outside of it called Artifact, because I look at that building as an artifact. I was uh, painting that mural when the 1989 earthquake hit, so that was like amazing. And there was none of that development right. around it. It was an empty parking lot. I remember running down there outside right. to, you know, so another one fall yeah. and everything was shaking. <laughs> and I remember that the first uh, Burning Man um, uh, was built there that got uh, burnt on the Baker, you know, uh -huh. on the Out beach, on Baker Beach. On yeah. on Baker beach. Um, and all the great personalities, uh, Bernie, Bernice Bing is now having a show at Asian Art Museum. She is leaving as the director as Carlos Lorca. I mean, all the Rene Yanez, you know, all the amazing people that have come and still use uh, that center. Yeah, is, yeah. It's, it's a testament to San Francisco, and it's really important to have these places where um, the artists can really experiment mm -hmm. and play together and have it open so that people feel comfortable, you know, having a teaching situation yeah. there. And it was, it was, I mean, again, back, you know, my feeling is, you know, coming here from New York, yeah. San Francisco felt like a, a place where artists could live affordably right. and used focus on, to, yeah. it used to be, right, yeah. they, they could live affordably and focus on making art. Uh, and, and being a part of community. And I think that, you know, the San Francisco art scene, the community scene, the activism scene. Right. And the other thing that I was recently reading about, um, you know, just kind of researching the history of murals in mm -hmm. San Francisco, and it has such a rich history because of all of the, you know, the different moments in time of, you know, activism and um, a lot of the, you know, sociopolitical, um, you, know, you know, struggles with communities being forced out of neighborhoods and, um, we have Diego Rivera, and you know, it's, there's such a rich well, history in murals. The the tradition uh, from Mexico, uh, Tres Grandes, uh, Rivera, Orozco, Siqueiros, was really uh, is so strong in the mission community and the whole right. mission arts. And when I came to um, the Bay Area, I actually from the Manila we moved to Chicago, and I actually had my first inspiration in Chicago, which also is a very strong mural movement. And yeah. I came to the Bay Area and I realized that my own personal background being from the Philippines and what they call Magsalitan and Tagalog and you know, it's my, my speaking the language and that the south of market was where 40% had a 40% uh, population of Filipino uh, community. Oh, wow. yeah. And I thought, well, the missions got, I mean, they got that covered, yeah. you know? <laughs> and that I wanted to explore the South of Marcus because I didn't see any murals about that community. And I wanted there to have, because murals, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of street art, but murals and muralism mm -hmm. as a kind of art movement and art form is a, a kind of public painting, mm -hmm. which is telling stories. You know, it's, sure. it's more yeah. about telling stories yeah, about the site, which is, Something that I have translated not just in, in paint, but also other materials. Mm -hmm. As a, my approach is like, what are the stories here to tell? You yeah, know, it's, about it's, 
we'll get into that a yeah. little bit because I think you're you're doing that with the piece that we're working on right now. Exactly. But um, yeah, I just you know also just to stay on the mural thing for a moment, um, you know I. I think that you know it's it's probably safe to say that you were you were one of few women who were working in large murals in San Francisco at that time as I, well. That's quite true. <laughs> I mean, I think the first mural I painted was nine was nine uh, stories high. It's this one here, uh -huh. you know, and we were getting out there on big scaffolding and and you know, really honestly, I'm a young woman. I'm getting into the art world. I like to paint big. Yeah. What are my options? I'm living in a small rent control apartment in the Haight. I don't have a big studio. I don't have, I, you know, as women in the art world, we were we had a lot of struggle to to get yeah. resources, to get the things you need to. So, so not just did not only did I want to do public art because I believe that as a, a, a member of the urban in my society that I I have voice in terms of what my environment looks like. It right, shouldn't right. just be corporate decisions about advertising and billboards and you know selling selling you that we should have other kinds of visual imagery in our society that tells us who's living here yeah. who's here what's the history here yeah. or what's important <laughs> to us so starting to do murals was a way for me number one as a painter to paint big mm -hmm. because I like to paint big <laughs> you know and also to do this content driven uh, concept driven kind of work. Sure, sure. Yeah. And you know, little did we know that you know back back then it was a bit more of a uh, kind of an urban intervention. You know, right. It wasn't necessarily sanctioned. It wasn't paid for. It wasn't part of the um, marketing uh, strategy for a new development. Whereas now it is. Murals have become a, a major part of our landscape, and 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 so much so that they are. Kind of built into the structure of the brand or the or the developer's it's, model. It's kind of amazing because yeah. you know the where I started from was not it right. was not that I just you know worked hard to raise the money and you know go to the places where I could like figure it out. Right. And uh, I did also this Statue of Liberty mural on a homeless shelter, the Soma homeless shelter, which was restored later and. You know, and I also did work in LA where they had a neighborhood art center through Spark. And yeah, there's definitely a grassroots mural history and movement that built this. Yeah. But it's like many things in our society, we have a very horizontal view of what's around us, right? right? But if you look at the history, women like, like myself and, and people from these communities that didn't have access to, to museums and right. to the regular, yeah. you know, we didn't have access to multicultural movement, to all of those, the feminist art movement, that was our access, and we, we, we created it together, yeah. you know, yeah. and ourselves. Taking over certain walls or asking for permission, but Or really, not, yeah. you know, or, I mean, I, I was definitely a person that worked through the, the, the bureaucracy yeah. to raise, because it's expensive to make these things, yeah, you yeah. know, and, you need stuff, so, but now they have percent for art, and the whole landscape has kind of changed, and it's um, interesting to see, you know, like yeah. how, how it, and different styles have evolved over time, and from yeah, different pieces to, um, are, yeah. Uh, so obviously the arts commissions have right. become more prevalent in our right. urban art scene. Right. Uh, the percentage for the art has, has right. really fostered a lot of you know public a art. A lot of public art. I think that yeah. we're, we're seeing that a lot of the arts commissions are actively um, wanting to work more with um, you know the the non-traditional artists, you know the non-white male artists. Right. They're, they're actively pursuing LGBTQ. Artists of color, right. um, you know, different ethnicities, mm -hmm. uh, people who have a distinct relationship to the neighborhood or sure. the community, and I think that's amazing. Um, so we're definitely, you know, seeing that. I, the project that we're working together on right now is is part of the San Jose Arts Commission. Yeah, the San Jose Public Art Program, and uh, it was a competition. I mean, a lot of the projects that I've, uh, you know, are yep. it's, a, it's a competitive process, and you. Um, you know, when in the beginning I used to kind of build up my, you know, like there were competitions, but often were, but late more and more. So um, I 
saw, I saw it and I thought, hmm, it'd be interesting. I mean, from my own point of view, I yeah. just worked with the AC Transit, you know, the, the um, public transit, which is, every time you get into a project like this with an agency, it's challenging, but it's also interesting because you learn a different, something else about the community, society, and city, and area that we're living in. So when sure. the fire department one came up, it's the fire department training center and emergency operations center. So I thought, that's interesting. I would like, to, being that we have a lot of fires in California, I would like to know <laughs> a little bit more about this. So I applied for it, and yeah, and I got the job. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting that you say too about you know working with different materials. I think as a muralist, and I had this conversation with a very good friend of mine, Bunny Reese, who's a muralist in California as well, based out of Joshua Tree. We were talking, and I had shown her a project that I was working on in my, in my house. It was, a, it was cut panels of wood, oh, okay. painted, applied to the wall, and, mm -hmm. and we had a conversation about what a mural is, and you know, you, um, by definition, a mural is paint applied to the wall. Right, right. Right, permanent, as permanent can right, be. Right. Um, but, um, you know, with a lot of the new materials that are available to us and mm -hmm. new technologies there for cutting and mm -hmm. assembly, and mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we are seeing a lot more of this kind of dimensional, uh, you know, sculptural mural, where sculpture meets mural, and I would say yeah. that the project that we're working on right now mm -hmm. has a sculptural yeah. aspect to it. It's a relief, it. right. metal relief. I mean, you could just call it a metal relief. Why do we call it a mural? And I think that's interesting because it doesn't have to be. It could be a metal sculptural relief on the wall. Right. And yeah, it's not paint to directly to the wall. Right. And 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 I have, you know, in recent years started to work a lot mosaic and mm -hmm. I've worked a lot in tile and and some metal and um, different materials because for longevity and because you want to work with different materials yeah. because it's interesting. And um, but I think what why. Uh, as a muralist, and kind of coming out of the school of muralism, right. you know, I think when I design a piece, I'm also con telling a story. Right. So it's not simply abstract, which I have done more abstract pieces, <laughs> but um, there is always still that story there, yeah. you know? And in this case, it's a fairly, it's a story that I had a long process working with the fire uh, chief mm -hmm. and with the people that work in the emergency operations and really in entering into a conversation with them mm -hmm. so that I could design something that brought my artistic interests and their, you know, when they, when somebody comes to that building and that site, they're gonna see this, this is gonna be the emblem right. of this space. Right. It has to be readable. Some 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 uh, ability to see that it's related to either helping people or fire department. What or is community. this? Right. right it right. has yeah. to do. And we actually we had, we had there was some struggle in making the design because I definitely am interested in patterns. Mm -hmm. And um, as a muralist, I'm think the success of a large scale outdoor piece has to do with good composition and mm -hmm. patterns. And the, um, pro not problem, but the challenge uh, when you're working with people that are, wanna tell the story of what this place is, is they want a lot of things in there. Right. And it can get too busy and yeah. you can't read it. And that's where I think the designs uh, can not be as effective. And so I've always in my own work really you know, you know, well, make sure that my compositions are, right. uh, that I look at the architecture and what does it need there and how should it look. And, and in this case, I wanted to use this non-repeating pattern because the emergency operations people and the fire department training emergency operations I learned are very different. One is tactical <laughs> and one is operational. Right. And the operational <clears throat> side was more abstract in a way. They're, systems operating and it was these patterns of emergency that were never the same mm -hmm. so i'm like well i have the pattern for you because <laughs> this is a pattern which is a pattern but never repeating, Not repeating you right. know and then of course the rubble we had a lot of talk about rubble because they do that training the fire department training they create situations where the firefighters can 
be in like mm -hmm. a rubble situation. So right. I'm thinking about all these things. And then of course there's the city. It's like, who, who is this for? It's the community and this relationship to the community, the firefighters and the emergency operations people want the people of their community and their city to be involved in their own uh, safety. Right. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a partnership. Yeah. So these are the, th those are the things that I was trying to design yeah. around. And so, uh, so yeah, I think one of the challenges is to maintain your artist, your personal artist exactly. and your, your personal kind of uh, motif, right. and then also to satisfy the needs of whomever is, you know, the, the, the artwork is for. And that's, that's one of the challenges with public artwork. These days, in particular, when you're working with an arts commission or, or a developer or something like that, is the, there's the dance that you have to do to maintain your passionate perspective as well as meeting theirs. Exactly, and yeah. I think that is a skill developed. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's something that I've been developing as an artist. Like, I, I think there's this idea that, oh, ah, that's not so good as an artist. That's not your pure vision. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. That's not, you know, your, your you know, um, creating. Well, and I do think there's a danger in this dance mm -hmm. of, you know, sort of giving in to just here's your list of things that you want and yeah. I'm just going to put them up here yeah, for yeah. you. You know what I mean? That's something I won't do. Right. So I stuck to my guns <laughs> and, you know, my vision of what I thought would be. Uh, but I changed it. Yeah. I changed it a lot to try to uh, answer what I, it's all listening. You know, it's storytelling, it's listening, it's improvisation, it's collaboration, it's a skill. It's a great skill that um, I continue to try to. Develop. Well, and it allows you to to expand your your potential, to expand to ch and challenge yourself. And I would say, you know, uh, it, would you think that this mural is is a kind of um, is this the, the the process and the style of uh, installation that this is? Um, is it a um, Kind of a stepping stone. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's definitely a, a progression for me. Right. I, I'm really um, um, excited about that, and and you know, finding a fabricator and 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 thinking about the materials and how you're going to do this is a hard part to the yeah. process. And 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 when I started to think about my idea and how how my how is this going to get made, you know, uh, I my first step was to ask other artists. Yeah, you know, like. You know, you look around, who makes things, I visited you, yeah, I went to the yeah. space, I was like, can this be done here? Yeah. You know, it's big, can we lay it out? Can we see what <laughs> it's gonna look like? Do they have the space for it, you know? Uh, how's that relationship gonna be? Because yeah. that's so important, you know? It is, it's, uh, we were talking about dancing, you're dancing with right. the client, you're dancing with the Arts Commission. Now, for when you get out of your scale and out of your normal skill set, now you have to add another person to dance with, which is the fabricator, right? Exactly. And so, um, I think that, you know, we're, we're certainly excited to, to install this project. I and, know. Uh, um, and, you know, just, you know, the collaboration with you has been amazing. It's been great, um, yeah. You know, I think having somebody with your background who understands mm -hmm. the complexities of an installation, mm -hmm. understands just the nuance of, of getting details figured out, mm -hmm. um, and also has the ability to work with the bureaucracy of a city mm -hmm. and the building department. It's, mm -hmm. it's very challenging and that's why, you know, I think the arts commissions are doing a great job at also kind of giving some of these projects to young artists because it's, for a young artist to think, to know what you know mm -hmm. and to have, you know, with a team like One Hat, One Hand, having the experience that we have working in the bureaucracy of the building departments and insurance and structural engineering, there's so much involved and so, um, yeah, I, th I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be an exciting uh, installation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really is. I mean, you know, you um, work all this time. People, I think, who are just getting into this don't realize, I think the first thing you need to have is patience. Yeah. You know, and you have to read the detail. You have to, like, you, you know, yeah. you've got to pay attention, you know, and, and um, because structural stuff is... And you know the thing that I learned when I started working on bigger, I mean, painting a mural on the side of a building that's already built, yeah. that's one thing, but that is not about going into a construction project. Right. And you are just another 
part of that. Yeah. You are not the special artist. <laughs> oh, let's just like stop everything, the art's coming. No, 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 no. There's a whole lot of things going on. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of time. There are a lot of different, um, you know, parts to the project, skills, and and you have to fit in with that. And there's a lot of different relationships happening, and it's stressful, and you just have to um, bear with it, you know, yeah. each step of the way, yeah. and. Open communication. I really enjoyed working with you, Marcus. I thought that you brought like a really um, um, straightforward, um, you know, just calm and and practical. Okay, we're gonna whatever you know thing that we need to figure out just next. Just one step at a time. Just one step at a time. <laughs> next, you know, and that's really important. You know, yeah. being able to just address. Everything as it comes and nobody, you know, it, it'll all work out, yeah, you know. I, I guess I've been doing this a long time now too. Yeah, you have <laughs> because I've worked with a lot of different people and you know, you just need the, you know, the steady go forward, yeah. you know, we'll, 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 we'll address these things as they come up because they do, you know. And to not make too big a deal out of things because we're all, we're all gonna figure it out. It's we're gonna, gonna figure it out, yeah. it's gonna yeah. happen, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and, um, you know, we had all this weather lately and, you know, and so, um, but it's exciting to, and I thought, you know, I'm really, you know, translating my work and working with Cal and then seeing the, what the people who, or, 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 or your fabricators and the design that they made in the metal, you know, opens my eyes up to different techniques and right. effects. I welcome that, it's like, great, you know, yeah. I, I wanna see the different possibilities that I, I don't have the knowledge of because I haven't worked in that material as sure, long as this sure. person who worked on it for all these different projects. So they're bringing all this knowledge to yeah. it. So it's fabulous. I mean, I know? think, you know, from, from my, you know, one of my exciting, you know, fa factors of One Hat One Hand is to, to be an atelier, to work with artists, to yeah. help them, you know, uh, with, to broaden their potential, yeah. to expand their horizons or open up new materials, new methods, to go bigger, um, you know, and then, you know, it, it, as we get more and more skilled at doing that, um, you know, I think, yeah, like for me, like, you know, this project, um, you know, I hope, we, you know, is, is one of many that we can do together. That'd be great, um, yeah. But on that, I just, I do want to kind of just get into um, some real, you know, um, actually, you know, some important details about this work. Sure. Um, just regard, and let's just say, like, if you can say what the name of this piece is, and just say, yeah, like, sure. Yeah, talk about the piece that we're working on together, and you know, what is the name of the artwork, and what is the inspiration origin for it. So the name of the artwork is Resilient City. Uh -huh. And um, I love to title things, and I didn't know what the title of this was until I finally really understood what was important to the fire department mm -hmm. and the emergency operations and the public art program in the city of San Jose. They want this place where they're gonna train people and, mm -hmm. and deal with emergencies to build a more resilient city so that when emergencies and fires and floods and everything come, they're working together in concert to protect people and to right. protect the city, you know? And uh, I learned about, you know, mitigation and preparation and, um, uh, you know, the, the, the ways in which we as individuals can um, prepare for emergencies and the ways that these, uh, uh, you know, institutions or these ser services mm -hmm. uh, help us. So that that finally, when I created the design and I put the city on the top, you know, and the rays coming out, so that it's hopeful. I mean, ultimately, you've got the rubble at the bottom, which is the and the the fire. But as you move driven. upward, it becomes. But as you optimistic. move upward, yeah. it becomes optimistic. Yeah. You know, so you're coming from the things falling apart to the figures which represent the workers, basically, mm -hmm. who have emergency and fire, who are saving our lives and who are trained to help respond, you know. Right. We're expected to help mitigate, but they're gonna be the responders. Right. And then the design, um, so it comes from this rubble and then it comes together in this pattern, which is quite 
beautiful, and then it becomes the background for the city. Mm -hmm. And the city, which has in the, in the landscape of that city, has some important sites of San Jose. They're specific to San Jose. The oldest Adobe house, right. Cesar Chavez's house, you know, an Eichler, a classic, you know. Uh, so it has symbols within the city mm -hmm. and other recognizable architecture from downtown San Jose. So that you know, that's San Jose. Because that's one thing interesting, the, uh, the fire uh, chief is like, it's San Jose. I mean, that's their city. Sure, this is sure. the San Jose yeah. Fire Department. San Jose, like any other city. Yeah, this is like San Jose. San Jose. Yeah. Uh, and so that it was important that it was part of the design in that kind of detail. Yeah. Um, when it comes to um, kind of selecting materials or, or in, in the process of selecting materials for this project, um, how did you kind of land on the materials you chose? Well, they kind of wanted it too. Um, and I wanted to work in metal. I had just finished a project for um, the AC Transit and that was all metal. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed the um, look of it and I like the sculptural part of mm -hmm. it and uh, I like the idea of layering it and um, the different shininess to paint yeah. you could use, like the different way you could build up textures and they didn't want a painted mural so you basically have a choice of mosaic mm -hmm. or metal I guess or yeah. I guess you could do stuff with durability is a thing as durability well, right? is yeah. huge yeah. so um, so when I was looking for a fabricator I was like okay who can do this metal mm -hmm. you know like a, or you know there's bronze I looked at that you know there's different right. you know you could cast or you could but then you've got your budget so <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's a big part of it yeah. is like you have to work within your means to um to make a successful project. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we, and that was, uh, I thought, really helpful in my first conversation with you. It was like, Marcus, this is what I've got to work with. What can we do? Yeah. You know, so, and I appreciate that, um, you know, just getting it all on the table and what, you know, what, what are the possibilities here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel as though this project has inspired you to move forward with this this medium? Um, you know, are, are you maybe planning any other uh, works with a similar uh, well um first i have to get commissions <laughs> 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 and um yeah i would love to do this uh again and it really just honestly it depends on the project that you get yeah you know what i mean you you don't really know until you yep. get a project i'd love to do more i'd love to do um experiment with more ways of using it and yeah i mean it just kind of was a building off the one I did before and you know so yep. they definitely build yeah. but I'm always always curious about different different light I mean there's so many things to yeah. to consider and whether a project is inside glass or outside or you know yep. there's all these things yeah. yeah I mean I think it's interesting to you know being here at the luggage store gallery um, and, and your show here this mm -hmm. is a solo show yeah. yeah solo show here at the luggage store gallery yeah. in, in San Francisco yep. yeah um, and so you're working in large scale public artwork right. and you're also working in smaller scale, you know, installation. Or what, what would you call these? The yeah, it's an installation. You know, I always work across material, you uh -huh. know, because I'm working from ideas. So in this show, I have porcelain drawing and painting. I'm glazing on porcelain. I have prints. I have paintings. I have a sound, a wooden sound piece, game uh -huh. sunka. Yeah. Uh, I have the textiles and a video. So. Yeah. You know, it's, and one of, I always have an interactive piece. I always love, you know, people to be somehow connect and be right. part, part of it. And um, so I've always done my studio and performance and gallery work alongside my public work. Mm -hmm. I feel that one informs the other. And I think that for me, it's really important because it keeps you connected to what you're interested in personally. And I think that it's something that's important to take into public space. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like that it's, because otherwise I think, honestly, I think we can get too trapped in design for design's sake in a mm -hmm. sense. And you kind of, your personal practice and keeping on top of what interests, your own rabbit holes, yes, your own wormholes, yes. that those <laughs> things keep you connected to 
what's important to you personally, which I think translates to we're all individuals in social environments. So we all have, we want to have that heart and soul yeah, and things, yeah. you know. Um, well, I can have, uh, let's see here. I wanted to say, um, yeah, with regard to working with San Jose um, and the Arts Commission there, um, you know, maybe speaking a little bit to that process and maybe, um, yeah, just the experience of working with him. Yeah, I so I um, got the project and I've been working with Lynn uh, Rogers and um, I had worked with her on like, I mean, this years ago on one of my first projects and then later on for a project for a small park there that was turned out to be a very fun and successful project. So we had a good history uh -huh. together. This is certainly a bigger and more complicated project with its own challenges. And uh, I really appreciated working uh, with her and Michael, who's the, mm -hmm. the director, um, um, but directly with Lynn. And then there's um, uh, all the different folks, you know, that you work with. But it's been good, you know, because we're both, you know, you have to have a sense of humor as well as uh, very, you need to be very professional yeah. and also you know, serious to deal with things, but also have a sense of humor and working relationship so that it's respectful and you can have fun with it too. Yeah. And I think that the yeah. entire team on this project was, you know, very professional, you know, very um, obviously, you know, striving to, to make things Work. the best they can be right. and, and having all the proper concerns. Uh, but everybody was just like, you know, in the flow, really working well together. Uh, and I think that's what really makes a project like this succeed. So, right, you know, yeah. we had uh, Dominic too, who was, you know, running multiple projects and having to, you know, like, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, everybody wants it to succeed, Yeah. but I think you're not always prepared for everything that's gonna yeah. come up because it's always new, there's always surprises. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, it's just a matter of like having that flow, as yep. you say, yeah. Um, I guess in a, as a way to kind of close this out, I would say, um, you know, in once it's installed and having having seen it in the shop and, and seen it all laid out and all the colors completed, knowing that we're going to install this next week, um, do you feel as though it's it's ter it, it's met your expectations? Did, does it look as though you intended? Yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty. I think it's very key to uh, public art and design processes. To understand how your digital or your 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 small design starts to get translated, right? And I think that takes experience on both the part of the artist and the fabricator and the city clear person who knows, like someone like Lynn knows. Look, I get it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's it's more something you have to explain to people who don't know right. that this is going to go through its phases and as it progresses. But it you know, look, you know, you've done your job, you yeah. know, you've, you've checked out your samples and your, you know, your smaller versions and your, you know, so that when you, so it's not like, oh, this looks, this doesn't look at all like what I intended <laughs> it to look like. Right. It's actually like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what we were going for. Because of the right. time it takes to do it and all right. of the, the, the processes right. involved, there's no surprise. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, the big surprise will be when it gets on the wall yeah. just because yeah. Finally, it's physically yeah. in its where it intended, where what it was yeah. designed for, and that's very excited to, to see well, that happen. Let's let's get out there and do it. Let's do and it. I'll, yeah. I'll see you out there <laughs> next week. Yes, uh, exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna get this up on the wall. So fabulous, uh, Johanna. Thank you for thank chatting you. with me, and um, yeah, super exciting. Yeah. Pleasure. Hope hope for more. <laughs> <laughs>